Thank you. So I'm here today to talk about the importance, the absolutely vital importance of ethics in relation to artificial intelligence. But standing here in this amazing venue takes me back to my days at university at Northumbria, down the road, where I studied law. And there are two modules that I think were particularly relevant to what I'm talking about today. The first one was medical law. And in medical law, it was oversubscribed and it was really energetic. And we talked about the issues of the day. So we looked at when life starts, when life ends, what does it mean to consent? And we also looked at the, um, the governance structure around IVF, which was quite new technology at the time. So we were talking about moral issues of the day, and it really made me feel like that was the essence of being a student, talking about those really important human topics. Contrast that with the law of information technology. That was a really small, there was four of us doing that. We were the weird kids. Everybody else was doing commercial property where the money is. We were studying the law of information technology, which was quite new at the time. And we looked at intellectual property. It was so dull and boring because there wasn't a human element to it. And so it's not sort of without irony that I'm standing here today, 25 years later, having had a career in nothing but information technology. Um, I provide the legal and commercial wrap for corporate technical solutions. And increasingly, ethics has become part of that. I don't know if that's as I become more senior, or actually I think society is changing so that ethics is becoming more important. Millennials want to work in ethical companies. There's the Me Too campaign. So I think ethics is becoming increasingly important. And nowhere more so than in relation to artificial intelligence, which is what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to take you through the good, the bad, the ugly of artificial intelligence. I'm gonna leave you with my ethical truth. And this is a TED talk, right? So there is a call to action. Of course there is. So first of all, what is artificial intelligence? Are we all in the same place on it? So artificial intelligence is the programming of a computer by a human such that that computer can gather data, analyze the data, and crucially, come up with decisions based on it, on its own. Quite scary, right? And I guess you can liken that to being the parent of a small child. So when you're a parent, you want to instill some values in your child. You want to tell them what the expected behaviors are. But pretty soon, that child will start making its own decisions. And that's when the trouble starts, right? Well, maybe not. Um, Ethics, I'm sure you're all more familiar with. So ethics is doing what's right. Problem there is what's right for one person is not necessarily right for another. Okay, so we go through the good. The law firm, Slaughter and May, described artificial intelligence as being superhuman. And to an extent that's true. When analyzing, gathering and interpreting data, a computer never has a bad day at the office. It's never tired, it's never hung over, it's never distracted, it's never bored. And what that means is the decisions that it comes up with are more consistent and more transparent than anything a human could do. Does that mean that it's better than us? I would say in that aspect, yes, but there is so much more to being a human. There is the feelings, the morals, a computer can't do that, it never will do that. There are some detractors, there are some things around artificial intelligence that maybe people have some serious questions about. The one that you might be most aware of is the um, automated and driverless vehicles that has a, an impact or an element of artificial intelligence to it. There is a danger that when faced with a potential collision, the driverless vehicle will make the wrong choice and perhaps run over a little old lady rather than drive into a wall. How is that controlled? Well, it goes back to how it was programmed initially. So my view is it's not more dangerous because the computer has 
more data to analyse in order to make its decision. And it's not bound by the horror of the impending crash. It won't be distracted. So hopefully the decision will be better. However, very recently, back in, in December, Sam Hyun, amongst others, have questioned whether driverless vehicles are actually racist. This is because there's some evidence to suggest more people of colour have been run over and injured by a driverless vehicle than white people. Is this because the cars are targeting people of colour? No, it's because when they were programmed initially, whoever did it forgot to advise the computer that there are different skin tones. And so it's not the computer's fault, it's the human. And you know, there are driverless vehicles taking people on, on tours around Switzerland towns at the moment, perfectly happily. It, it's, it's a function. Um, to look now at jobs, that's one of the things that people say, this is going to take our jobs. Artificial intelligence will replace humans. To an extent, that's true. But actually, the jobs that will be replaced are the most boring jobs, the jobs that no human should really want to do. And there are much more fulfilling options out there. So, for example, Business Insider in 2017 said that there will be a job called a walker-talker in the future. That is somebody who will just spend time with the elderly, allowing them to reminisce. And surely that's a much more worthwhile function than entering data. I'd like, like to think that people will definitely think that. There's another job as well, and I'm definitely going to go for this one, the human empathy interface to make sure that the artificial intelligence does have a layer of empathy and understanding and morals. That's still for us to do, so I'm definitely going to go for that job. Last question around on the bad side is, could the computer act with malevolent, malevolent intent? I don't think so. I've just explained the reasons why it's not the computers that are malevolent. But in the event that that happens, what's important is just as, a, as it is with humans, it's the governance and the sanctions. That's what we need to have in place to manage it. OK, so I'm going to take you now through something that actually Elon Musk said. And I think it's quite interesting. This is the ugly. He said, in artificial intelligence, we're unleashing the demon. Given his background, he developed PayPal, he developed some of the electric vehicles, and he's currently operating a space company. So I find it quite surprising that he is quite alarmist in his speech here. And I'd like you to contrast that with the comment on the other side, a new Jezebel seducing our young men. But actually, that wasn't said about artificial intelligence. That quote comes from over 100 years ago in relation to electricity. And the point of it being here is that whenever there is a new advance, be it electricity, be it IVF, artificial intelligence, there will always be people who raise these fears. And actually, you know, that looks like hell and damnation and the end of humanity. But it's good because it makes us stop and think and take the necessary steps to protect ourselves. And that is what we need to do in, in this technology. So my ethical truth that I said I would bring you is that artificial intelligence is here to stay. It's absolutely amazing. It can do huge things for us. It can you know, currently being used to develop new drugs that are targeted not just to illnesses but to specific individuals to make them better. It's hugely ad advantageous, but what we need to do is make sure that we govern its use and actually the humans that do the initial programming. So my call is for actually the United Nations or a similar body to come up with a, a global governance framework that will control the use of AI it doesn't exist today. So, guess what that means? The call to action. Until we have a global framework, it's incumbent on all of us in our everyday lives to think about how we will manage artificial intelligence. 
If you're just starting out on your employment journey, or if, like me, you're a bit further on from it, you will always need to think about how artificial intelligence is going to touch your world and how you're going to control it. You've got to ask the questions. So if people are being hired, they need to be the most ethical people. We need to find ways to eradicate any bias, be it conscious or unconscious. So think about that in any hiring decisions. Think about it in your corporate strategies and in your, your policies going forward. Always think about how artificial intelligence is going to be treated in my world. What we need to do is make sure that the demon is not unleashed, okay? The demon is a tool for us to use and show it who's boss. And who's boss of artificial intelligence? It's the ethical human. Thank you.